Hello everyone, I hope you all had a great weekend. Now, in my previous video I said that I would uh, show you another game by the winner of uh, my arena, uh, Vincent Retires from Netherlands, also known as Operves and Unleeches. And uh, the first game featuring the Mangarini variation was one of my choosing and this is a game he sent me himself, uh, saying that this is his favorite over the board game. Now, I checked the game out and the game is quite, quite beautiful, it's actually one of the uh, more violent games I've ever seen. And uh, a lot of the variations that never happened are, are just as great as the game itself. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So uh, let's see the game. Uh, his opponent is uh, Henk Carson, also a chess player from Netherlands. I believe he's uh, rated somewhere around 2100. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find a photo of him as most of the photos when I uh, Google Henk Carson uh, are from Dutch websites. So I, I didn't want to use a, uh, a wrong one. So here's the hoodie guy. Uh, uh, Vincent has the white pieces and he opens with knight to c3. This is something called the Van Geet opening. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now knight to f3, transposing into the Reti opening. d6, we have g3, e5, d3, bishop to e7, uh, bishop to g2, now castles, castles, and c6. Uh, b3, knight b to d7, we have e4, h6, bishop, bishop to b2, rook to e8, and knight to d2, preparing f4. We have knight to f8, f4 now, and knight to g4. As uh, white decided to push f4, there's really no point in pushing h3. This would weaken the king too much, so g4 seems like a, a nice square for the knight. Also, there's the immediate threat, knight to e4, that would fork the queen and the rook. So queen to e2, not allowing the knight to come to e3, and now d5. Uh, black decides to sacrifice the e5 pawn to get some counterplay with bishop to c5 check. So white accepts, f captures on e5 and bishop to c5 check. Uh, king to h1, only move, uh, only move if you don't want to lose material, knight to e3 now, attacking the rook on f1, and here starts the game, uh, e captures on d5. Now black can definitely capture the rook here, if black decides to do this, knight captures on f1, you get rook captures on f1, and now as you can see, white has a very powerful center. The rook is ideally placed on f1, attacking that weak f7 pawn, and uh, white will definitely have compensation for, for this uh, exchange sacrifice. Uh, if black decides to get rid of the center, for example, c captures on d5, then comes knight captures on d5. And after bishop to e6, there's c4, and you can see that uh, this is qu quite a nice structure white has in the center. If black ever el eliminates the knight, then c captures on d5 will again form a nice center, and moves like d4 when the knight moves d5 are coming, so a lot of compensation for white here. So after this e captures on d5 move, black decided not to capture the rook, he played c captures on d5. And here we have queen to h5, immediately going for that weak f7 pawn. And here black definitely could play something like knight captures, rook captures, and then bishop to e6 to defend the weak f7 pawn, uh, but white would still have plenty of compensation with moves like d4, uh, and the knights are coming into the game. So after this queen to h5 move, black decided to play knight to g6 first, and only then will he decide what to do with the rook, but now it's, it's, now it's too late, because rook captures on f7. And rook captures on f7 is not the winning move, by far, the position is still very much equal and very much playable. Uh, here you have to capture the rook, if you don't wanna, I mean, your knight is attacked here, uh, this bishop will become very active eyeing that g7 pawn, so you have to grab it or you're simply worse. King captures and now comes uh, knight captures on d5. And here it's very interesting, what can black do here? Uh, if you play something like knight captures on d5, then you get the immediate rook to f1 check. And uh, you have to move the king, king g8, and now after queen captures, uh, it's a much better position for white. Moves like e6 are coming, this bishop and queen will be harassing the g7 pawn. It's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent position for white. So after this knight captures on d5 move, black decided to play something else. He played bishop to g4, and it seems the white queen is trapped. So. Unless a white wants to part with his queen, uh, he has to give up more material to continue this attack. Uh, here Vincent played rook to f1 check. And now uh, black has to make a choice. Do you grab the rook and allow queen captures bishop on g4, because the knight on e3 is also protecting the bishop on g4, or do you move the king and allow queen captures on g6? Uh, in the game 
uh, knight captures on f1 was played. But let's see just what happens if king to g8 is played, as this is quite amazing. If king to g8 allowing queen captures on g6, uh, now black is simply lost. Now you have to play something, let's say knight captures on f1, as that's a pretty strong rook on f1, but now comes knight to e4 and uh, white's attack is unstoppable. Uh, you can't capture the knight because knight to f6 uh, with check will pick up the queen, opening up a, a discovered attack from the bishop to the queen on d5. So knight to e3, you don't want to lose more material, uh, but now comes e6, threatening queen captures on g7 checkmate. Rook to e7 blocking, and now comes knight d to f6 check. Uh, if you go king to h8, you get queen to h7, this will be checkmate, so king to f8, but now comes knight to h7 check. Only move is king to g8, and now comes knight to f6 check. Uh, only move now is king to h7, and now comes uh, knight to f8. And uh, now you can see that both knights are covering the h7 square. Queen to h7 is a terrible threat of checkmate. Uh, but here black plays queen to, uh, bishop to f5, and he traps the queen. So that's very unfortunate, although the queen can come to h5. Uh, you don't really have to. Here you can simply play queen captures on f5 and black is doomed. Uh, there's still the threat of queen h7 checkmate. Uh, and if you capture the queen, you get knight to g6 and this is checkmate. The knights are cover covering all the squares around the black king. So this is just one of the variations that would happen after this rook to f1 check if you decided to play king to g8. Uh, in the game, knight captures on f1 was played and now queen captures on g4. Here, Black, Black saw that there were simply too many threats, uh, he decided for, to go for queen to g5, uh, offering to exchange queens, also attacking the knight on d2. Uh, here, white played queen to d7 check, and again, you have to decide what to do here. Your knight is still attacked on f1. So, if you block with the bishop, for example, bishop to e7, uh, white will simply grab the knight. If you play king to g8, white simply grabs the knight, and... Uh, Black decided to defend with tempo. So he played rook to e7, attacking the queen. Now comes knight captures on e7. And now if you, if you capture the knight, you're still gonna lose the knight on f1. So first he decided to, to, to try out a tactic. Uh, knight captures on g3 with check. You can see that the bishop on c5 is covering the g1 square. So the knight has to be captured. H captures on g3 and now queen to h5 check. Again, this bishop is nicely covering the g1 square. So only move for white is bishop to h3, uh, or queen to h3, white decides to go for bishop to h3. The queen is guarding the bishop on h3. Queen to d1 check, uh, we have knight to f1, the knight is now defended by the bishop. Uh, queen to f3 check, king to h2, and now queen to f2 check. Uh, bishop to g2 blocking, and now knight captures on d7. And here white has to uh, proceed very carefully as uh, black still has a lot of pieces and uh, the queen is uh, very close to the white king. So first d4, blocking the bishop's uh, battery with the queen to g1. Uh, bishop, uh, queen captures on c2 first. Now if you capture the bishop on c5, you lose the bishop on b2. Uh, so first e6. Uh, king to f8 and now comes queen captures on b7. Uh, if you capture the bishop now, you get queen captures rook with check and uh, the pawn is covering the f7 square, so you will have to lose a lot of material if you allow this. Uh, rook to d8, and now comes uh, queen to f3 check. Uh, king comes to g8, and now queen to f7 check. King to h8, and only now d captures on c5, uh, threatening checkmate on g7 as the bishop is eyeing the g7 pawn. Queen captures on b2, and now queen captures on e7. And after all is said and done, uh, white has a bishop and a knight against the rook, but the e6 pawn is so far advanced that this is simply too much for black. Uh, rook to d5 was played, uh, going for ideas like rook to h5 check. So queen to e8 check, king to h7, and now queen to f7, guarding the h5 square and also allowing this pawn to go up the board. Uh, queen to e2, uh, we have e7 now, and now rook to h5 check. Uh, you can't capture the rook with ideas of promoting, because if queen captures, queen captures, then the queen would be guarding the square of the promotion. King to g1, now comes rook to e5, attacking d7 pawn twice, uh, and now comes queen to f3. White is willing to exchange queens and give up d7 pawn, because the knight and bishop will simply uh, be much better than the rook. Uh, queen to b5, uh, and now king to h2, not allowing the c5 pawn to be captured with check. 
Uh, here black captured the pawn and now comes the finishing blow, queen to e4 check. Uh, offering his queen and uh, if black would accept this rook captures on e4 then bishop captures on e4 with check g6 let's say defending or you can move move the king but then the pawn is promoted with check and now the queen comes into the game and it's all over <clears throat> white is up two pieces and black doesn't really have any tricks here to try out there are no perpetuals so this would be simply losing so after queen to e4 check g6 was played but now simply e8 promoting to a queen and with two queens on the board, it's all over for black. Black tried a couple of more checks, rook h5 check, uh, bishop blocks, queen f2 check, now queen blocks, and it's all over. White defended, uh, and this there is no point in continuing this. With two queens on the board, uh, the queen b7, uh, a threat of checkmate. So in this position, uh, black resigned the game. So a wonderful game uh, by the winner of, of uh, my arena, Unleashes, uh, Vincent Rotaius, Operwesen. Uh, I, I know some of you said that I'm pronouncing his name uh, incorrectly, but uh, I don't really know how to pronounce Dutch names. So I, I tested it on Google Translate. That's how Google Translate, uh, you know, pronounces his name. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I, jo I enjoyed it immensely as it uh, you know, features a, a lot of interesting variations and a lot of great moves. Uh, I would like to thank Douglas Rife, uh, Theo Drivas and uh, Taras uh, Karpiak for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, probably going back uh, to some old classics from the 1959 Candidates Tournament. And, uh, you know, don't feel, you know, Feel free to, to comment on Mr. Hoodie Guy in the comments uh, to show your support as he loses a lot of games, uh, you know, for our entertainment. He lost so many important games throughout history, uh, just, uh, you know, so, so, we had, so we would have some nice uh, games to watch. So, yeah, thank you all and I will see you soon.